Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Foretold You YouTube channel. This is a Bible study of Isaiah 17. May God bless us in his, our understanding of his word this evening. I uh, took a look at this with the bombings going on in Damascus of uh, Israel bombing Iran's weapon supplies that they have there. This just came to mind. Very famous verse, Isaiah 17, 1, to start out. And then there's a lot more depth to this uh, chapter beyond that. Isaiah 17, 1 reads, The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. So in Isaiah 17, 2, it talks about the cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. I don't know where that's at. I need to study where that's at. Uh, there is a parallel about flocks lying down in a uh, destroyed nation, which we'll get to in a minute here. In fact, it's the very next verse, Isaiah 17, 3. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria, they shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. So Ephraim is the United States of America. It's going to be destroyed at the same time as Damascus is destroyed. The remnant of Syria, being the Christians in Syria, being raptured at the same time, could be what the second part of that verse is indicating. Isaiah 17:4, And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. If we look at Isaiah 24:16, we see, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. If we look at the actual full verse of Isaiah 24, 16, we see something very interesting. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. This is a reference to a peace treaty and a forsaking of the everlasting covenant, which is the borders of the land of Israel, which we, the United States of America, are proposing, and Israel is accepting as we speak. So that's a very interesting connection in with Isaiah 17. Also that first part, I'm not sure what it means. We have heard songs, even glory to the righteous from the uttermost parts of the earth. Maybe a reference to the rapture happening at the same time. Maybe a different reference. If we go back to Isaiah 17, 4, and on to 5. And it shall be as when the harvest man gathereth the corn, and reapeth the ears with his arm. And it shall be as he that gathereth the ears in the valley of Rephaim. So that's the rapture happening at the same time as the destruction of Damascus and the destruction of the United States. And uh, Israel waxing very lean, because they have dealt been dealt with very treacherously. So Isaiah 17, 6, Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it, as the shaking of an olive tree, two or three berries on the top of the uppermost bough, four or five in the outmost fruitful branches thereof, saith the Lord God of Israel. So the harvest comes, which is the rapture of the church, but then there is left the grapes, and the grape harvest comes after Jacob's trouble, not something you want to be Therefore, if we look at the grape harvest, Revelation 14, 9, And the angel thrust his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Isaiah, or Revelation 19, 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. So, not a harvest you want to be here for. Then Isaiah 17, 7 says, At that day shall a man look to his Maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. So when the rapture comes, I do believe, uh, there'll be a banner, an ensign, a signet raised. Men will marvel. Uh, they'll see Jesus coming in the clouds and everyone disappearing and they will be ashamed, Isaiah 17, 8, And he shall look not to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves nor, or the images. And at that coming, the graven images, the idols are cast down and destroyed. 
Isaiah 17, 9. In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bough, and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. So desolation comes on the day of the Lord. And what will ye do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which shall come from far? We see that Edom uh, shall be a desolation. Every one that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. Zephaniah 2.15 tells us, this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Every one that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his head. So this rejoicing city is the United States of America, dwelling carelessly, uh, far away from the danger. We say in our heart that there's none beside us, but we will become a desolation be a place for beasts to lie down in. That's a reference again. The beasts lie down in to earlier in Isaiah 17 here. Yeah. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. So there's the desolation. Isaiah 17:10. Because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength, Therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shalt set it with strange slips. I'm not sure what that means yet. Isaiah 17:11. In the day, sh in the day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. That's a reference to the day of the Lord, and we also see in Revelation. 18.7, kind of a tie-in here to the desolation verse from Zephaniah. Revelation 18.7, talking about the destruction of Babylon, or the United States of America, says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. So, Terrible things are coming to this nation that believes they'll see no sorrow, who thinks they are queen, Lady Liberty, ruling over the world. Isaiah 17:12, Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. We were told um, by Jesus in Luke 21:25, you know what to look for at the time of the end, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So Isaiah 17:14 concludes, And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. So when we see the borders of Israel being messed with, uh, that is a tie-in here to Isaiah 17.4. Jacob, being Israel, will wax thin and lean at the same time that the treacherous deal is taking place. 2416, for the uttermost part of the earth, they have heard songs, Woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously, yes, very treacherously. If we look at that, the verses that are covered here, let's look back at Isaiah 21, 2. This peace plan that we have proposed is uh, a vision for peace. Isaiah says, a grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer, who's uh, the art of the deal? That'd be Donald Trump. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, Elam and Media, being Persia and Iran at this point. Iran is promised retaliation against Israel for the, Israel's attacks against their weapons and supplies. Um, at some point they might make good on that. It sounds like the Bible says they will. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, 
all the sighing thereof have I made to cease. So tied in with this grievous vision, this treacherous deal, it seems like there will be an attack coming from Persia or Iran. And of course that ties in with Ezekiel 30, uh, 37, 38, I believe. So let's go there real quick. Ezekiel 37. 38. 38.2 Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophecy against him. We see that uh, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and will bring thee forth and all thine army. And who's with them? Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, the house of Togar Togarma, all with them. And at the same time, Ezekiel 38.10, at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. 38.11 And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates. It talks about in Zechariah 2.4, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. But there's a little bit more to this, I think. It goes on, Ezekiel 38, 12, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, that would be the United States of America, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, we're a melting pot of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, we are rich among the nations, and that dwell in the midst of the land. So at the time that Gog attacks Israel, and also Ru Russia and Persia attack Israel, they uh, will come and attack the U.S. of A. And at the same time that God comes against the land of Israel, the Lord God's fury, his jealousy, the fire of his wrath will come. So there's the day of the Lord starting. Now, back to a tie-in to Isaiah 17 with this um, place that dwells safely far away. We'll actually go to Ezekiel 39. This is what God is saying. I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they shall know that I am the Lord. So here is what looks like a full nuclear exchange between Russia and the United States of America. Dwell, dwell carelessly in the isles is mentioned in Zephaniah 2.15 that we looked at. If you look at Zephaniah 2.15, this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly. That said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. Now, how has she become a desolation? So, I am, and there is none beside me. And then if we look back at, again, Isaiah 17, The desolation there, we look at back to Revelation 18, 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give to her. For she saith in her heart, I set a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And back to Zephaniah. two fifteen. The rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there's none beside me. So back to Isaiah 17 to summarize. Yes, it starts out with Damascus being taken away from being a city. But it also appears to be, speaking of the United States of America, being destroyed at the same time that Damascus is taken away from being a city. It appears that it's happening at the start of the trouble for Jacob for Israel. And that's tied to the peace deal that they move their boundaries with. And the rapture happens at the same time. But the gleaning grapes are left behind for the to be trodden in the winepress of the wrath of God. And everyone will see God come 
and they will look upon their maker and respect the Holy One of Israel. And he will destroy the images and the graven images at that time. There will be desolation on the earth, Isaiah 17, 9, because we have forsaken God. The day of grief and of desperate sorrow comes, the day of the Lord. So these things happen, the destruction of the U.S. of A. and the destruction of Damascus and the rapture, all three right at the start of the day of the Lord. And the nations come against Israel will be driven back, but Israel will suffer terribly in the attack. So that's Isaiah 17, which came to mind when we saw the bombing taking place, Israel attacking Damascus, Iran saying they will come against Israel if Israel does that. Of course, I've said that many times, but at some point, according to the Bible, they will make good on that threat. Thank you for watching. I hope this brought more um, insight in Isaiah 17. There's some stuff I don't know here. The cities of Roar and um, let's see further down here, Strange Slips. Some interesting things that I'm going to go study some more on. If you know what any of these things mean specifically by references to other places in the Bible, please let me know. And that's the key to understanding everything in this, the Word of God. Everything is answered somewhere else in the Bible, usually multiple times, and it is our honor to piece it together and show our understanding um, of the Word of God. The most important thing, though, between now and this day of the Lord that's coming oh so soon, is to share the gospel with as many people as we can, such that they can be saved. Jesus Christ came to this earth to do just that. He'll come again to baptize the earth with fire, uh, bring destruction upon the earth. So let's make sure we save everyone before that happens. And all that's necessary is that they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and they will be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is not salvation in any other. So if you have any loved ones or any friends who are good people, and think that's way, the way to heaven, please share this with them, because it's not, uh, there's no salvation in anyone but Christ. Thank you. God bless you. May the Lord keep you and watch over you and protect you and help you in this time. Uh, it's very precious. We have very little time to share with others to save everyone, and God wants every single person to be saved. Second Peter 3 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance God bless you all thank you